If you want to get into AI development as a JavaScript developer, this course is the perfect one for you. I'm going to show you how to build a Node.js AI application that searches your database and gives you information about it. So imagine you own a grocery shop and have an inventory. You can essentially ask the AI to find items that are similar to coffee, for example. We're going to do so using a database to store our data that will also allow us to do similarity searches. So, in other words, AstroDB, as well as use Mongoose.js to do so. This is a great one for AI newbies, as we will be touching on topics such as vector search, LLMs, and more. By the end, you will have built this AI chatbot that you can ask questions to, such as how many items similar are there in the inventory? And the AI will look into your database, do a vector search for similar items, and bring back the most similar ones in order. Pretty cool, right? So many things you can build with this. This is just one example. So what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Once again, here's a breakdown of what we will be learning today. We're going to look at the vector search database that we will be using, or in other words, the database management system, AstroDB, followed by what is a vector embedding, followed by MongooseJS, and then we're going to actually look at the new AstroDB API in action, which will allow us to build our own AI chatbot. And lastly, we're also going to look at accessing the API via HTTP. Okay, so first things first, let's sign up to a database, specifically a database that allows us to perform vector search. And the one that we're going to be using is one called AstroDB by Datastax. So here we are on the datastax.com website. All I'm going to do is just simply click on sign in. You can, of course, try it for free if you haven't signed up. I already have, so I'm just going to click on sign in and I'm just going to sign in with my Google account. So that should take me to my dashboard. OK, this is what you should see. Now, you might see a pop up saying enable preview. I don't want you to click on enable preview. OK, we're going to keep it as it is. And once again, just get rid of that. We're going to not enable preview at the moment. So if you have yours enabled, please disable it now. Great. So here on the dashboard, as you can see, I have previously made some databases. If you look in here under databases, it's ones that I have previously made like so. We're going to go ahead and create a new one. So just go ahead and click on databases and click on create database. Now here, I want you to select a serverless vector database as we have been discussing. And we're just going to name our database something. I'm going to go ahead and give it a generic name. Uh, let's go ahead and call it movie DB as we're going to be creating a movie database. OK, specifically, we're going to be getting a JSON file that will allow us to input some data in here. But don't worry, that will be coming up soon. For now, let's just get our database made. And to do that, we need to also add a key space name. I'm going to go ahead and call our key space movies. OK. So that's all I'm going to do. We also need a provider. I'm going to keep it as Google. And as the region, I'm going to go ahead and select US East one and create it. So that is now being created. As you can see, that is pending. And while that's pending, I'm going to go ahead and continue teaching you about what vector embeddings even are in the first place. In the fascinating world of computer science, and more precisely in areas like machine learning and natural language processing, there's this incredibly useful technique called vector embedding. Vector embedding essentially allows us to represent information like text, images, videos, and even sound into a format that algorithms can understand, especially those used by deep learning models. Now, for the purposes of this course, we will focus on text embedding specifically, as that is what will help us build our AI chatbot. So in terms of text, we can create a text embedding that will give us more information about a word, such as its meaning, that a computer can understand. A word will go from looking like this for us humans to this for computers. So essentially, the word car is represented by an array of lots and lots of little numbers from minus one to one. But why do this? Well, imagine you had this text. Tanya was late to class because her cat got sick. She ended up speeding in her car through the vans, trucks, and bikes and ended up getting a ticket. 
If you tell a computer to find a word in this text that's similar in meaning to car, you'd hope it'd pick up vans or trucks, wouldn't you? But nope, computers are not likely to do this. They could end up choosing a word like cat, which isn't what we want. This is because a computer is more likely to look at the words in the text lexicographically, kind of when you scroll through a dictionary. And since cat is closer to car in the dictionary, it could be considered more similar. The actual meaning of the word does not come into play. So how do we figure out these words that are similar to car? Simple. That's where text embeddings come in. By comparing text embedding to text embedding, we are able to pull out the most similar ones. And ta-da! Vans and trucks will have a higher similarity score than cat. Now, if you're scratching your head wondering what these numbers in the text embeddings actually signify, you're not alone. The answer depends on the specific machine learning model used to generate them. In this course, we will be using the create embedding method from OpenAI to create our text embeddings. To understand how these numbers can help us find words that are similar, however, and gain a deeper understanding of text embeddings or vector embeddings in general, please do check out my video on this here. Otherwise, let's carry on. Now that we understand the concept of text embeddings and what they represent, Let's get into using them by building out a simple Node.js project that uses the OpenAI create embedding method as well as MongoosJS in order to create a database for similar text. Now, we're going to use MongoosJS as it's relatively popular in the JavaScript world at time of writing. MongoosJS essentially provides us a schema-based solution to model our data. Here is an example of us writing a schema using Mongoose. A schema is essentially a template for our data objects. So for example, here we have created a car schema that will take the make of a car and the year of manufacture of a car. We would then compile our schema into a model. A model is a class with which we construct documents. In this case, each document will be a car with properties we declared in our schema. In this example, I have passed the string of Mercedes to the make property and the number of 2014 to the year property and saved it as the const gwagon. We can also access the properties via dot notation if need be, like so. Okay, so that is a very basic introduction into using MongooseJS. Let's dive deeper into using it at a less fundamental level via a project next. In this section, I'm going to show you how to build an AI chatbot project using the new AstroDB API that will allow us to build applications with vector search capabilities. It will essentially allow us to continue to perform Mongo's commands as we saw previously. Okay, so let's start off where we left and that is back here. Just check that your database is now active and showing up in green rather than pending. In this part, I'm going to show you how to essentially get started with working with vector search databases via the AstroDB API and essentially using Mongoose JS in an app in order to find data in the database. For this, I'm going to use a pre-built, very simple app that we're going to essentially take from the internet and run on our local machines. The only prerequisites I ask of you before starting is to have your vector-enabled AstroDB database ready as we do here, and have Node.js installed on your computers in version 16.20.2 or later. If you click on the URL I have given in the video description, it should take you to essentially this GitHub page, which will give you the template of the app that we will be taking from the internet using the create AstroDB mongoose app command. Okay, so this is the app. As you can see, it is super, super simple, and it's also going to provide us with the movies JSON that we're going to use to populate the database we just made. Okay, so as you can see here, it's going to be an array of objects, and each object is going to essentially represent a movie. Each object is going to have a title. So, for example, here we have Kansas Saloon Smashes, a year of the movie, the genre of the movie, in this case it's comedy, a description of the movie, and then a vector embedding. Okay, so this has already been generated for us. It's an array of numbers from minus one to one, so vectorized text of the above that's going to allow us to search for similar movies to this one. 
okay? So that's what it looks like. It's very, very long. It's a very long array. Once again, each object has a title, a year, the genre, a description, and then a vector embedding or text embedding, to be precise, of the text above. Great. So once you've essentially had a little look around here, if you want, just make sure, like I mentioned, that you have Node.js installed on your computer. Please go ahead and navigate to nodejs.org and download the latest version, the version recommended for most users, making sure that it's the version of Node that is 16.20.2 or later. And of course, this one is great. So just go ahead and download that if you need to. Otherwise, let's carry on. Now, I'm just going to go back to the serverless database and we are going to essentially have to get a few things. The first thing we're going to need to get is an API token. This API token is a thing that will essentially allow us to communicate with this API and you can get it by clicking on the connect tab and then going down here, making sure that you have the database administrator role selected and then simply generate the token. Please be sure to keep this API key safe and not share it with anyone as if someone takes it, they can essentially rack up a huge amount of money on your account if you have a credit card attached. So keep that safe. I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this and save it on my computer or you can download the token details. The approach you take is up to you. Wonderful. Next, we're just going to scroll down to the connect with JSON API section and we're going to click generate config to generate a sample application configuration. So this is something that we're going to need in order to essentially connect the app that I just showed you that we're going to download to this database. So please go ahead and do that. Not forgetting to install NPX if you have not done so already. So to do this, you would just run this command in your terminal. So you would just run it like so. I'm not going to do it as I already have NPX installed, but just for those of you who have not. Okay. And let's go ahead and click generate configuration. And this time I'm actually going to download this configuration. I'm going to download it to my downloads folder. Now this path is important as we're going to be needing to find out where exactly this downloaded configuration lives on your computer in a bit. Okay. So click on the download configuration for me that will download into the downloads folder on my computer. And I'm just going to click escape. You will notice before we go that this information is essentially some of the stuff that we already decided. So for example, the key space name, I named that as movies. The region, I also selected US East one. The Astro DB ID has been generated for me and is unique to this database. And then we also have the Astro DB application token, which at the moment is hidden. Let's move on. Now it's time to actually pull down that project, that project we saw on GitHub, and we can do so with the npx command. So once again, what I'm going to do is just copy this whole command. And this time I'm just going to navigate to a directory that I like to work on on my computer. That directory is called development, but please feel free to navigate to wherever you wish on your computers. I'm just going to go CD to go in there and then development. And once I am in there, I'm going to paste that command. So it's npx create astrodb mongoose app at latest. Okay, and hit enter. Just make sure that is all one string separated from the npx. And all of that should get going. Now you will be essentially prompted to proceed. I'm going to go and hit yes or enter. And now is where you're asked where exactly that downloaded configuration is. So as a default, it is searching in my downloads and is searching for the Azure DB Mongoose config JSON file that we downloaded previously. So I don't need to change anything here that I know that's where it lives. Just be sure that if you have downloaded that Azure DB Mongoose config JSON file before, you might want to delete it as some funky behavior will happen. You need to have this exact naming of the file. So if there's one previously that has this exact same name, running this app might not work. Okay. So that's just something to keep aware of. And great. 
Now, do we want to enable vector search functionality? Of course we do. And for this, we will need a funded OpenAI account. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes, as I do want to connect to OpenAI in order to use this. And for that, we need to get our OpenAI API key. So I'm just going to go ahead and head over to my OpenAI account, which I am paying for. I have funded this, so I'm just going to sign in, click on API, and under here, I'm going to go into API keys and just create a new secret key. And I'm just going to name this demo key. You can name it whatever you want. And after clicking create secret key, I'm just going to copy that so we can use it essentially. Okay, once again, my OpenAI account is funded. I have put money behind it. So you might want to do so as well if you want to get the full functionality. Great. Now this prompt is optional. So if you don't have an OpenAI API account, just go ahead and click no. It will just limit some of the functionality. I do, however, as mentioned, so I'm just going to paste in my OpenAI API key like so and hit enter. And that's now going to spin up my app along with all the variables such as my OpenAI API key along with the text in the AstroDB Mongoose config. Okay, I will show you that when our app spins up. Simply go into the project that we just made, so AstroDB Mongoose app. So just make sure you are actually in that project and then hit the command npm start. And great! So there we have it. Our app is now ready. We are running our Node.js app. It's super simple. It's super basic. I'm going to show you how it works and then I'm going to show you the code to actually make this work so that you can make your own. So let's do it. Let's test it out. At the moment, it's just inserting 200 movies, including the vector embeddings for those movies from our JSON file. And once it's loaded, you're going to be prompted a question. The question comes with some text. So the text reads, with the data loaded, I can find a movie based on your favorite genre. What kind of movie would you like to watch? And now we can use arrow keys in order to select a genre. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select comedy. If I select comedy, one film will come back. Okay, it will be from the comedy section. And on this occasion, it is the film The Curtain Pole. With the description, The Curtain Pole is a 1909 American comedy film directed by D.W. Griffiths. A print of the film still exists. The film was made by the American Mutoscope Biograph Company when it and many other early film studios in America's first motion picture industry were based in Fort Lee. New Jersey at the beginning of the 20th century. Okay, so we are literally just bringing back the object, one of the objects from our movie's JSON file essentially that we put into our database and bringing it back. The other question we get is you could also simply describe what you're looking for and I will find relevant movies. I will use vector search. Just tell me what you want to watch. So we are here prompted for essentially a second question if we want to continue asking. And this is where vector search comes in because I'm going to write some text and we're going to do a similarity search on our database to return back a movie that is similar to the text we write. So let's give it a go. I'm going to write, I would like to watch Charlie Chaplin. Now, the app will perform a vector search and return three relevant results, such as a busy day, which has a similarity score of 0.919469244. And the description is, a busy day is a 1914 short film starring Charlie Champlin and Max Wayne. We then get two other options. The second with a lower similarity score, which is the face on the bar room floor. And the third being cruel, cruel love, which has a 0.988 similarity score. Okay, so amazing. We have now performed a vector search. Great. You can then, of course, combine it with a genre for a general search as well and just keep going. Amazing. Great, so now that we've seen how the app works, let's look at the code in order to understand how to build our own. So here's the code. If you remember, here's the movie's JSON file. Okay, like I said, it's an array of objects with each object representing a movie with a title, a year, 
a genre, a description and the vector embedding or specifically a text embedding of the above. This is what we fed into our database. Next, if we have a look at the AstroDB MongooseJS file, this is essentially where the magic happens. First off, you can see we imported some dependencies, Mongoose being one of them. Alongside Mongoose, we also have a dependency called Stargate Mongoose, which allow us to get driver and create Astro UI in order to handle the connection with your AstroDB. Now, in order to actually connect to AstroDB, we're going to have to write a function. So here is the function that I have written connect to AstroDB, and we're going to put in those environment variables, which live in a process env file that has been generated for us based on the config file we downloaded. Okay, so again, here is the content of that env file that was essentially generated for us when we ran the command. Once again, we have the AstroDB key space, which we named as movies. We also have the region, which is East one, the database ID, the database application token. And then we also have the open AI API key that I pasted into the terminal before we created this app. This was optional. So if you didn't put it in here, you won't see anything here on your local machine. Great. Let's go back here. So we're going to use create Astro UI that we imported from Stargaze Mongoose to construct the connection URI dynamically using the provided environment variables. Next, we also need to configure Mongoose. To do that, we use Mongoose set auto create true, which will enable auto creation of the database schema. Followed by that, we also have the mongoose set driver, which we pass through the driver, which we also imported from Stargate Mongoose. And this will set a custom database driver provided by Stargate Mongoose. Now it's time to actually connect to AstroDB. By using Mongoose Connect, we are establishing a asynchronous connection to AstroDB with the constructed URI we defined above and an option flag of is Astro true? And finally, we're going to export the function connect to AstroDB as a module so that we can use it in another file of our application. So in summary, this module that we just exported acts as a reusable utility for connecting to AstroDB, abstracting away the details and allowing other parts of your application to connect to the database by simply invoking connect to AstroDB. Great. And finally, let's look at app.js. So this is the part of the Node.js app with the mongoose commands that we learned previously that's going to perform the actual queries. Let's have a look now. So first off, we're going to use the .env package so that our application can read environment variables from the env file, kind of like we saw previously. Next, we're also going to import that module that we exported in the AstroDB mongoose file so that we could use it here. We're also going to require the packages mongoose and chalk to allow us to define schema for movies and connect to AstroDB to allow us to define schema for movies. And finally, we also have some imports from the util file. These imports will allow us to convert movie and movies to string, but more importantly, use the generate embedding function that we write in the users file, which utilizes the open AI API and specifically the create embeddings method from it. Please go ahead and check out the users file if you want. Now we're going to write a function to essentially create a mongoose movies collection. This function will essentially drop any existing movies collection if it exists in the database that we made so that we can start fresh. Once we can start fresh, we also define a new schema for movies, including a special vector field that is used for vector based searches. After we define that schema, we then insert movies from the local JSON file that I showed you into the database in batches of 20. Okay, so when you saw the loading 200 movies text show up, that was the load data function working. Next, let's look at the other functions in here. Here we have the find movie by genre using the find one method from Mongoose. This will allow us to search for one item in a database and doesn't perform any vector search. Okay, 
So when the user is asked to select a genre such as comedy or drama, this is the function that gets called and I'll send you look in our database for a movie in that genre without performing any vector search. It simply does so using the find one method from Mongoose. Great! Next, let's look at the find movie by description. Once again, this is where the user gets asked for a description. This function does utilize the generate embedding function, leveraging OpenAI's API in this case to perform a semantic vector search. So we take the prompt that is written back. So for example, when it asks me what I want to watch and I write something about Charlie Chaplin, that is the prompt. And that is what we send over to our generate embedding function in the utils file that will then send a request to OpenAI to create an embedding from that text, from the text that we can then compare to our database to find something similar in it. Okay. So once we get that, once we get that text embedding, I can then pass it through into the correct mongoose methods in order to find it in our database and limit it to three options coming back. Wonderful. One more function to go. We also have find movie by genre and description, and this combines both the genre and the description based searches. So essentially utilizes both. So in this case, we take the genre, so we get a selection from comedy, drama, or any of that sort. And then we also take the prompt that is given, so the text. The prompt we, you guessed it, turn into an embedding, thanks to the generate embedding function from the utils file, and we combine it with the genre in order to look into our movies database and return back three similar movies so three similar movies with similar semantic meaning. And that's really it, okay? So that's how you would do it. Please have a go at looking at this code yourself, playing around with it, and seeing if you can tailor this to your own database, okay? So please do let me know how you get on. Hopefully this code explanation was useful in order to get going by yourself. Okay, so we have now built an AI chatbot that interacts with our database and brings back similar titles in movies, thanks to Vector Search and AstroDB. However, there are other ways to interact with our database also. We can also use our AstroDB API base URL to access the JSON API directly via HTTP. Your AstroDB API base URL can look something like this. I'm going to show you how to get your AstroDB API base URL and interact with it thanks to some pre-made Swagger documents. Okay, so back on the home page of the Astro portal, I'm going to ask you to just navigate to the databases, to the movie DB database that we just made and make sure that is active and not hibernating. Okay, so just make sure that's active and we're going to connect to it in a different way this time. We're going to connect to it using the base URL. So this time I'm going to click connect. We can generate a new token if we wish. So make sure you're the database administrator and click generate token. And of course, make sure that that token is safe. So this is the token that we will be using, the last one right there. Or you can just copy out the whole thing. It is up to you. Great. Now we're going to choose to connect with the base URL, so under API and tools, and this is our base URL. It is unique, so this part is what makes it unique, and we can also communicate with it thanks to this cool Swagger UI that will make our lives a lot easier. So I'm going to click this in order to launch the Swagger UI. So here it is. And this is great because it essentially allows us to get data from the database that we just made. We can post new items to it. We can essentially interact with it. So I want to show you how to do that now. Now that we are here, we can simply scroll down and check out some of the commands. Now, as we are going to be interacting with a collection and a namespace that have already been made, I'm not going to create a new namespace or anything like that. We want to communicate with the movie's namespace and the movie's collection that was created by running our project right here. Okay, 
So here we go, here we where we created a collection. We first dropped it and then we created one using this schema right here. And we added all the movies from our movies JSON. We use the insert many mongoose command to do so. Great. So now let's interact with that database using Swagger. So under documents here, I'm just going to select this. I'm going to click try it out. The namespace, as we know, of movies and the collection name is movies as long as it hasn't been dropped. And now I can use commands such as the countdown documents command. All I'd have to do is just get rid of this placeholder text. So I'm just going to get rid of all of that and we can filter our documents so count documents will count for us for example if i want to filter my documents by genre and the genre being comedy so i only want to look in my database for documents with the genre comedy i could do so with this code right here and then i will click execute and we get a 200 response meaning that that was okay, and the count we get back is 50. Okay, so there are 50 documents with the genre comedy in our movies database. If I go ahead and change this to drama like so and hit execute, let's see how many return. We also get 50. That is convenient. If I just want to get all the documents back, I'm just going to get rid of that filter and just count all the documents in our movies database and hit execute and we get back 200. So 200 documents live in our database. So count documents, just one of them. We can use commands from this drop down to make our lives easier and this will kind of give us some placeholder boilerplate code. So if I go ahead and use the find command, I can find individual movies in my database, okay? So for example, say I want to just find them all. Once again, I would just do find like so and hit execute. And we get them all. So here's our data object, here are our documents, and it's the array of movies, okay? Along with the vector embeddings also. Great. Okay, so that will be all 200 of them and we can filter out by any of these really, by title, by year, by genre, by description, using the filter command like we did previously. So perhaps let's try that again. I'm going to filter. So that is the original boilerplate code for me and I'm going to keep filter this time. Let's get rid of everything in here, however, and I'm just going to get rid of everything else. And now let's filter by title Ben-Hur. And it will bring back any movies that have the exact title of Ben-Hur. So let's do it. And great, we get back that one item in our array because there's just one movie with the title of Ben-Hur. Okay, wonderful. Just like we did before, we can find all the movies by genre as well. So I could change this to genre comedy and we know there's 50 because we used count document before but this should filter out all the movies with the genre of comedy for us and this array should now hold 50 objects that will represent movies with the genre comedy. Great! So that is how you would interact with the database. Of course, there are many, many mongoose commands you can use. So for example, these are just some. We've used the finding ones. You can also add new ones, update ones, and so on, just using the kind of boilerplate code that is given to you. So hopefully that makes sense. Please do have a play around with this in your own time using the boilerplate code to write your own mongoose commands. Wonderful. I hope that makes sense. Once again, we are simply interacting with the base URL. This is ours right here. And thanks to the Swagger docs, it just helps us construct that request much easier, okay? We are essentially going to the movies namespace, movies collection, okay? Simply by filling out these two elements right here. So if I did the you will see that that changes to 
da, okay, of course this won't work because the namespace of da does not exist, but we're essentially just constructing this URL thanks to the Swagger docs, and we're constructing this request as well. Okay, so once again, da has been changed here. We are passing through our token, and we are also passing through that whole mongoose command. Great, as is written here. Okay, and that's it. I hope you've learned a lot about developing AI applications using JavaScript as a beginner. If you'd like to learn more, please do check out my course on vector embeddings that takes your knowledge deeper, or do check out some of the resource for you below in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again soon on this channel.